I've had this Tektronix 453 for many years. It was given to me 19 years ago and I always thought it worked fine until one day I tried using the external horizontal mode, also known as XY mode, and the times 10 mode. It was then that I discovered that I had a problem that I didn't know I had. And that problem was a strange fishbone-like pattern on the waveform in times 10 mode and a kind of fuzzy, unsharp image on the CRT when using the external horizontal mode. I asked questions about this on a Tektronix online forum and no one had a direct answer for me on that. Most of my responses were to check the power supply, which I had already done. In fact, when you calibrate this scope per the manual, the first thing it has you do is to check all the power supplies in the unit as they supply power to every circuit. There is a positive 150 volt supply, a positive 75 volt supply, a positive 12 volt supply, and a negative 12 volt supply. I checked all of them and none of them were out of regulation. Now the manual says maximum power supply ripple is two millivolts. I did check the positive and negative 12 volt supplies and I found 10 millivolts of ripple. More than the manual says, but not really too crazy. I tried to measure the positive 75 volts with my digital multimeter and it gave me numbers that didn't make any sense. When I tried to look at the waveform with either of my Heathkit scopes, all I got was a fuzzy mess on the CRT, which I didn't understand is they should have plenty of bandwidth for measuring 120 hertz power supply ripple. At this point, I wasn't too concerned as everything was basically working. Back in 2003, I did have some trouble with the positive 75 volt supply, but I made some repairs and then the scope was working again. After recently doing my LED mod to fix the burned out A sweep triggered indicator lamp, I decided to go through every circuit in the scope, measure the voltages on the transistors and so on, because I was convinced that I must have an oscillation in a circuit somewhere. At this point in time, I had limited knowledge of how an oscilloscope worked and very little experience working on one. I did fix my 1977 Heathkit IO4560, so that gave me some confidence that maybe I could restore this old 453, made in 1969, to full working condition. It was intimidating as the Heathkit 4560 schematic is one page while the Tektronix 453 has 17 pages of schematics, block diagrams, and so on. So I systematically went through every circuit in the 453. I found a few out of spec transistors, a bad tantalum capacitor on the A sweep board, and some other minor things. I cleaned and lubricated all the switches where needed and where it was, it was possible. I verified that all the connections on the horizontal display switch are actually making the connections and so on. But nothing I did seemed to help this problem at all. In the course of tracking down the cause of this problem, uh, I did notice that there was some noise on the waveform when in A or B sweep modes. It was a very small amount of noise, but it was there. And by looking at the schematics, one can see that the positive 75 volt supply must somehow be involved in this strange fishbone noise by virtue of seeing it on the beam finder. So uh, I decided to try to change the positive 75 volt 200 microfarad capacitor C1172 on the schematic and see what happened. Now I did check all these filter capacitors with an ESR meter and they all seemed to be fine. The ESR was maybe a little high and they looked fine on a curve tracer. So it was my opinion that they were probably okay but th there was evidence to the contrary. Now I have a bit of a gripe. Tektronix made the power supply section very difficult to work on. Getting to the power supply filter capacitors is a real pain in the neck. Tektronix didn't seem to put much thought into it. Either they were confident that no one would ever have to mess with those capacitors, or they didn't think people would be working on these things 50 plus years later. Anyway, to access these filter capacitors, you have to remove the B sweep board, the Z axis board, and the A sweep board. I only disconnected as many wires as needed so I could get to the capacitors and leave the circuit boards in place as there were a lot of wires to deal with. Once I had those out of the way, I could finally get access to C1172 and replace it. Now, I have a donor 453, which I use the filter capacitors from, so I didn't have to try to track down modern equivalents to them, which made things a lot easier. When I powered up the 453, there was actually an improvement. 
but the noise was still pretty prominent. So since this noise was associated with the horizontal section of the scope, I decided to look at the schematic again to review all of the power supplies going to that circuit. I noticed that the horizontal amplifier uses all of the power supplies, so once again I focused on that beam finder for some clues. It was then that it finally hit me. The 150 volt supply was also suspect since the final stage of the horizontal amplifier normally uses the 150 volt supply. Once again, I had to go through this same annoying process of removing all those circuit boards to get to the 150 volt filter capacitors, C1202, which is a 200U uh, microfarad, and C1204, which is a 10 microfarad. C1204 was especially difficult to get to, but I managed to deal with that one in a clever way. When I got it back together again, I turned it on and I was disappointed. The noise was still there. However, after a few minutes, it lessened to the point where you almost couldn't see it. So now we're talking. So then I tried the external horizontal mode and to my great surprise, it was actually looking pretty good now. Still not perfect, but it went from fuzzy and not that usable to quite usable. There's still a little bit of noise if you increase the intensity enough, but it is now quite acceptable to me. I suspect that the last bit of this noise is probably due to either the positive and or negative 12 volt uh, filter capacitors. I now know the process to replace these filter capacitors, but those two in particular are especially horrendous as they require you to pretty much have to remove all the rectifier diodes off the ceramic terminal strips so you can get to the connections on the capacitor. It's a real pain in the butt. So, what did I learn from all of this? Well, for one, don't 100% trust an ESR meter. These capacitors tested okay on the meter, but in reality, they were, they were not really good capacitors. Another one is that people like to commit recap aside and recap everything thinking that it will fix all their problems. I've seen from watching other people's TV and repair videos that problems are not always because of bad capacitors. My research on the Tektronix 453 was that the power filter caps seldom went bad. So that was just simply not the first place I looked. This is what can make repairing a 50 plus year old piece of equipment tricky because so many things could be the problem. And in a highly complex interactive piece of equipment like a Tektronix 453, it can get convoluted real quick. So in the end, I managed to repair it to 95% fully working to my satisfaction. And it has increased my confidence in troubleshooting. Uh, I have to say, that troubleshooting simple guitar related audio stuff is way easier.